In Ezekiel 33, the Lord tells the parable of the watchman to teach Ezekiel about his role as the Lord's prophet. This parable has two major lessons to teach us about the Lord's living prophet today. First, the prophet has a better vantage point to spot spiritual danger. And second, prophets are morally obligated to declare God's will, even when it's unpopular or offensive to do so. Ezekiel 33 begins, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Later on in the chapter, the Lord equated the watchman with Ezekiel, teaching him that he needed to warn the people of their wickedness so that they could repent. The first lesson is that the prophet has a better vantage point than the people he serves on the ground. A watchman would sit upon a tower to spot invading armies from miles away. Because they were higher up, they would be able to see farther and more widely than the people on the ground. The president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints sits at the head of the church with decades of experience in church service and, more importantly, decades of learning to hear the voice of God. He can also see challenges and issues facing the church from a bird's eye level and with a lens towards all of God's children. It can be really easy to look at challenges facing the church and to assume you have an easy answer, but the truth is that because of the prophet's position and because of his relationship with God, he can see the broader picture to make wise choices through revelation. On the other hand, it may sometimes be easy to think that the prophet's vision is perfect and that he can't ever make mistakes. And this isn't true either. We don't believe that the prophet is infallible, and we believe he's just as liable to make mistakes as any human. However, his position at the top of the watchtower gives him keener insight into spiritual threats facing the world than what we may be able to detect from our perspective. The second lesson is that prophets are morally obligated to declare God's will even when it's unpopular. The Lord taught Ezekiel that if he failed to warn the people after seeing a threat— the Lord would require their blood at Ezekiel's hands. As the prophet, Ezekiel would bear the blame for the people's downfall because he could have warned them when they had a chance. The prophet Narday is also obligated to declare the will of God so that we have a chance to repent and come unto Jesus Christ. Prophets don't always preach what's popular or convenient. Sometimes it may feel confusing why they spend so much time emphasizing a certain topic when it causes pain or frustration. The prophets and apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are not motivated by hate or by a compulsion to pontificate on their pet topics. They are commissioned servants of Jesus Christ to declare God's will, even when it's not easy. President Ezra Taft Benson said, If we're living the gospel, we will feel in our hearts that the first presidency of the church not only have the right, but also are duty-bound under heaven to give counsel on any subject which affects the temporal or spiritual welfare of the Latter-day Saints. Following the prophet won't always be easy, and it may take a leap of faith to follow their counsel when we can't see the spiritual threats for ourselves. But the prophet is God's watchman on the tower, and he has the spiritual sight to see at a vantage point that gives him a greater view of the world. When commanded by the Lord, the prophet warns the earth to prepare it for the second coming of Jesus Christ.